Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I wanted to keep on with the library um, shelf tour. Um, so we are we are down to the fourth shelf down and uh, three shelves up from the bottom uh, as we're working our way down this uh, shelf unit right here. Um, all right, so the first book on this shelf is a collected works of E.M. Forster. This has Howard's End, A Room with a View, and Where Angels Fear to Tread. I have read Howard's End and A Room with a View, and I am going to be reading Where Angels Fear to Tread this year. I'm super excited about it. So this is just a nice a nice older edition, but I was able to um, to get it in, in decent quality. Um, um, decent quality. I got it used, and it, it was a lot nicer um, than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot more beat up because of how old it is. Uh, next on the shelf, we have... Cervantes' Don Quixote. Um, I love this um, this edition. It's a really excellent translation as well. Um, nice big, you know, giant old book. But um, uh, I absolutely love this edition. I've read this about one and a half times. I read it once all the way through about two years ago, and then I kind of poked back through and um, reread the episodes that I wanted to revisit. And at some point, I will be rereading the entire thing, most likely in some sort of read-along form here um, on the channel. Um, the next three books on the shelf are all Virginia Woolf. Um, so I'll pull all those off together here. Um, the first is Orlando. This is the movie tie-in version, so that's why the cover um, looks the way it was. This is the um, movie, the uh, Tilda Swinton movie. I haven't, I haven't seen the movie yet. I haven't even read the book yet. Um, I'm super excited to read this, so I'm hoping to get to this either this year um, or very possibly it'll be moved to early next year. Um, um, but I, I'm very excited for it. Um, the next two Virginia Woolf books I have here is um, Miss Dalloway. I got this one um, secondhand, and so it has, here. it has all this secondhand marginalia, um, which I actually think is is interesting when you when you get a secondhand book and have someone else's um, notes and highlights in it. It's interesting to read it and to see um, how their opinions differ from yours, <laughs> um, or if they highlighted similar passages, or if they um, or if they um, wrote down similar notes to what you may have written down yourself, which. So, so sometimes it can be annoying, especially if you wanted to be the first one to mark up the page. But um, it can also be kind of an interesting look into someone else's reading habits. Um, and then last but not least for the Virginia Wolf books, I'm just going to put these two back real quick. Uh, we have To the Lighthouse. This is my, my copy of To the Lighthouse. It's a really quick old book. I, I still have the... Um, the, the barcode sticker on here. I buy all my books from Thrift Books and they all they always come with the little sticker and sometimes you can take them off and sometimes when you peel them off, it takes the cover with it. Um, and so in a lot of cases, I've left it on just to keep the um, quality of the books. Um, so this is To the Lighthouse. I absolutely love To the Lighthouse. Um, I read this last year. Um, it's a work of literary modern fiction. So it's very heavily reliant on stream of consciousness of characters. So there's a lot of internal monologues a lot of not there's a lot of everything's internalized with the characters so there's very little dialogue actually exchanged between characters and there's very few scenes that are actually taking place in the present moment a lot of a lot of the scenes that we get are are episodes recounted by characters um rather than us watching an event unfold live with the characters uh, but absolutely love this novel next we have this little tiny copy of The Importance of Being Earnest. I absolutely love uh, Oscar Wilde. He is one of my favorite um, playwrights, one of my favorite uh, writers for, for humor. Um, the Importance of Being Earnest, I have, I have never actually read this copy. Um, this is a copy that I bought after reading the copy in the family's library, um, because I didn't want to keep it in my personal library. Um, but I have read this play probably three or four times. I absolutely love it. It's so funny. It's such, um, it's such a short length that you can really just sit down and read it in one sitting. Um, and it, so it's always enjoyable to come back to. 
Um, next, I'm going to pull these three books out together because this is the C.S. Lewis sci-fi series um, out of the silent planet. Um, so this is the, uh, the namesake of the series, Out of the Silent Planet. And then it's Perlandra and That Hideous Strength. I love the cover on this one. Um, so I've read this series once all the way through and really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not a big science fiction fan, but mainly because I haven't really read enough of the genre to have any idea what's good science fiction and what's bad science fiction. Um, so it's definitely a genre that I am interested in becoming more versed in, and I definitely want to explore more of the science fiction realm. Um, and so if you have any science fiction novels that you think are um, kind of some of the best in the genre or any of your personal favorites, either novels themselves or uh, science fiction authors, please let me know down in the comments because um, that was um, one goal for this year is I'm trying to get um, ex exploration time in some genres that I haven't read very much in and science fiction would definitely be one of the most unread genres for me. Um, next on the shelf, that's right, slip these back in here. Next on the shelf, we have the, Thab uh, the Thaban plays by Sophocles. This is the uh, Penguin Classics edition. I have some tags in here because I, I studied this for, um, I studied this in high school. Um, I absolutely love these plays. I've read them all. I've read, I've read them all once and then I've read a decent amount of them two times. Um, they are, they're, they're, they're amazing. I love them. Uh, next we have Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility. Um, also a Penguin Classics. I don't know whether it's just, again, we got some tags <laughs> um, here from uh, different passages that I've I've notated. Um, I really love Jane Austen, actually. Sense and Sensibility is one of my favorite of her novels. I also really love uh, Pride and Prejudice and Emma as well. Uh, but Sense and Sensibility is, is my top favorite as of now. Back here. Uh, next, uh, The Stranger by Albert Cumeau. Um, I actually made a video on this, I think last week it was. Um, so this is one of my most recent um, reads. Super, super um, interesting novel. It's very short, very quick to read, but it packs a punch. There's a lot going on in this one. All right, next we have Ian McEwan's The Children Act. Uh, this is an amazing novel. It deals with, um, with so many, so many big themes. Um, the the main character is a judge in um, the high court, the high family court, um, in the United Kingdom, and it deals with um, a lot of the legal issues around um, uh, um, religion taking a, a, a religion's place in medical procedures. It's there's a young boy who needs a blood transfusion because of his cancer, um, and his religious beliefs hinder him from being able to have this operation done. So then this judge has to step in and decide whether or not to override the family's um, wishes in the dealings of this of this medical procedure. Really, really interesting novel. I loved it. Uh, next we have Julian Barnes. Right here, another, another short British novel. Um, Julian Barnes, The Sense of an Ending. Um, I love this cover. It's so... Um, it's so interesting, um, especially once you read once you read the um, the novel. So it's a short novel, um, not not very long at all. I read it in about two days. Um, it deals with a lot of themes of growing up, independency, um, kind of finding your way in the world, and then betrayal. And it's there's a lot packed in here. I I really enjoyed it. Next we have two John Steinbeck novels. The first is this little edition of The Grapes of Wrath. And then my personal favorite Steinbeck, East of Eden. And I absolutely love this copy. I actually have a Penguin Classics copy of East of Eden, uh, but I saw this in a, in a used bookstore and I just had to get it because of how absolutely beautiful this edition is. So this is my, this is my main edition of East of Eden. Next, actually, these uh, next two books are very new to my library. I just got them yesterday. Um, this is Thomas Hardy's Far From the Matting Crowd. 
I'm very, very eager to be reading this one. Um, it, again, it, it's fairly short, um, but from what I've read about, about this novel is it's, it's exceptional. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited for this one. Um, next on the shelf, again, this is a very new edition, just, just received it yesterday in the mail. And that is, um, William Thackeray's Vanity Fair, uh, Penguin's Classic edition. This is a pretty big, uh, novel. Again, I've read a lot of positive things about this. Um, and some not so positive things. Um, so I'm really interested to dive into it for myself and see what I think. The last four books on the shelf are actually all Montaigne related, uh, related to the French philosopher Montaigne. The first is this older Penguin Classics edition of the selected essays of Montaigne. Um, and so I've read this entire, uh, I've read this, this in its entirety. Um, which then led me, th or I should show this one first, actually. This is a 1945 edition of the Selected Essays of Montaigne, um, which I think is just so cool. I love, I love older books, and um, this is just, it's, it's, such a, it's such a cool edition. I love having a, an, an antique edition like this. Um, what I was saying uh, before showing this one is I had read the... The book here, the selected essays of Montaigne, and so I bought the complete essays of Montaigne, and have been reading through this. So this is this is Montaigne's brain basically um, in this edition, and it is a beast. It is huge, um, and it's and it's tiny, tiny little font too. So there is there is so much material here. Um, so I've read maybe three or four of the essays. Um, in here that are not in the selected essays edition. Um, and then my, my goal is hopefully by, um, just to keep picking away and then hopefully maybe by the end of the year having most of this read, just reading a couple essays a week. They're, they're usually pretty short and um, able to be consumed in a, in, in a single sitting. Uh, and then last on this shelf is a uh, biography, Montaigne Life. I'm really eager to be diving into this one. Um, especially, I want to be reading this side by side with his actual essays um, to be able to track along his life with his work. Um, I think that would, that's going to be really interesting. And again, there's a lot here. Um, so I, I'm very excited about this one. Uh, and that is the completion of this third shelf. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have read any of the books that are on this shelf, please let me know in the comments below. And um, like and subscribe if you want to. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.